दबाने तेले तो दिलान दे भाई बेर को सी बॉबले ने नो ये वाची जे चेकिंग अप दिलान Forty-seven-year-old pedestrian struck and killed in Cornelia, Ida. What you need to know. Breaking news from Cornelia, Ida, West Coast Demerara, a tragic accident has claimed the life of a 47-year-old pedestrian in the early hours of Sunday morning. The incident has left a community in shock, and police are actively investigating what led to this devastating collision. I'm here to walk you through what we know so far about this heart-wrenching event and the steps authorities are taking to find answers. In the early hours of November 10th, 2024, a tragic accident unfolded at approximately 12:10 a.m. in Cornelia Ida, West Coast Demerara. The victim has been identified as 47-year-old Sherwin De Kunij, a resident of lot 83, Back Street in Denhamstel. According to police reports, De Kunij was struck by motorcar hashtag #PAG7971, which was owned and driven by 33-year-old Raz Chad Adil from Parfait Harmony, West Bank Demerara. At the time of the accident, Adil was driving eastbound on the northern lane of the road. Initial investigations reveal that De Kunij had been standing on the southern footpath moments before the accident. Tragically, he attempted to cross the road from south to north. Suddenly stepping into the path of Adil's vehicle, the impact caused him to fall onto the roadway, and emergency services were quickly dispatched to the scene. De Kunij was immediately transported to Leonora Cottage Hospital, but unfortunately, he was pronounced dead on arrival. His body was later transferred to Ezekiel Mortuary, where a post-mortem examination will be conducted to determine the cause of death. The police investigation is actively ongoing. A breathalyzer test was administered to driver Raz Chad Adil, which showed no presence of alcohol, eliminating intoxication as a potential factor in this tragic incident. The authorities have also impounded the vehicle for thorough inspection by licensing and certifying officers. 
Meanwhile, Adel remains in police custody, where he's cooperating with investigators to piece together the events that led to this tragedy. This heartbreaking accident is a samba reminder of the risks we face on the road every day. Our hearts go out to Sherwin de Kunich's family and friends as they navigate this difficult time. We'll keep you updated as the investigation unfolds and more information becomes available. Attorney General takes action against Brutus and wife. What you need to know. Today's top story involves a high-stakes courtroom drama. Calvin Brutus and his wife, Adonica Alder, continue to face legal challenges after withdrawing yet another case from the High Court. The Attorney General is now pursuing them for unpaid legal costs following a series of dismissed claims and frozen assets. We encourage you to share your thoughts on this developing story in the comments section below. If you have any new stories you'd like to share, message us on WhatsApp, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more updates on this and other breaking news stories. What led to these legal back and forths, and why are these unpaid costs now the focus? Stay with us to understand the latest twist in this ongoing legal saga. To understand the current situation, let's go back to August 19, 2024, when Calvin Brutus and Adonica Alder first filed a high court action against the Soku head, the commissioner of police, and the attorney general. In their initial case, they sought a court order to lift previous judgments, including one that froze their bank accounts. This case, however, was not their first attempt at legal action. Prior to this, they also sought permission to leave the country, citing the need for medical attention. That case was dismissed by Justice Gino Persaud, who further ordered Brutus and Alder to pay $250,000 each to the respondents. Fast forward to now, these costs remain unpaid. In the latest development, Brutus and Alder made a surprising move to withdraw their latest action orally in court. This marks the second time they've filed and later retracted legal claims, creating a sense of legal backtracking that has now caught the Attorney General's attention. With the six-week deadline to pay the court-ordered costs passed, the AG's office is taking steps to enforce payment and recover the costs incurred by this prolonged legal dispute. The question now is whether Brutus and Alder will comply or if this will result in yet another chapter of courtroom contention. In conclusion, the Attorney General's push to recover legal costs highlights a commitment to upholding the law, even amidst these back-and-forth legal challenges. It's a reminder of the implications and costs of taking legal action, especially when cases are repeatedly withdrawn. With that said, thanks for watching, and until next time.